Happy Saturday, y'all. It's live. We got technical difficulties, but we We're fixed here. them. <laughs> uh, we are in the home stretch, but here's the thing. We saved one of the absolute best for the last weekend of season 10. Yes, we did. <laughs> that is an understatement. I'm Emily and this is Caitlin. We are the co-founders of the festival and couldn't be more thrilled to host this live conversation with the writers and creators of the new star series, Blind Spotting. For those that don't know, Blind Spotting was first a feature film created by Raphael Casal and David Diggs, and they are back to expand the world in every way with this completely original TV series. It doesn't happen often, but sometimes you watch a series and within the first three minutes, maybe 60 seconds, you can tell that you're a hundred percent in. You may have no idea what's coming, but you know you want more. That is the series for me personally, and I think for y'all too. We're going to take off so you can see directly from Raphael, David, and their amazing writers. But first, because this is live, don't forget you can put your questions in the chat. So with that, we're going to bring out our moderator, Ashley Ray Harris, writer for Vulture, the AV Club, and host of TV I Say with Ashley Ray. Ashley? <laughs> Hey, welcome everyone. I want to welcome everyone to the ATX Television Festival. I'm so excited to do this panel. Uh, I absolutely agree. Blind Spotting is one of the most exciting experimental shows that I think premiered this year. I am so excited to talk to this amazing team of writers. Uh, so let me just introduce them. Let's get into it. Uh, and also, if you are following at home, please make sure to use our hashtag TV for all at the festival. You can also, I think, submit your questions that way too. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, we have Raphael Casal, uh, and I, you can turn your cameras on when I say your names also. Uh, I'm Davi, here. Boom. <laughs> Davi Diggs, Priscilla Garcia Jacquel, oh, yeah. Nigela Mamoon, Alana Brown, and Benjamin Turner, the entire writer's room behind Blind Spotting. So happy to have you all here. Thanks for having me. Very happy to be here. Thank you. Right. So let's just start from the beginning. Uh, how did you go about deciding to turn this movie into a TV show? Uh, what was the process there? Was that something you were eager to do? Take it away, Diggs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we, um, it wasn't our idea. Uh, we, we weren't going to do it, but Lionsgate suggested it. Um, and our response was no. It took us a long time to write that movie. Uh, and I think uh, after spending 10 years writing a film. Oh, I think he froze. I think we're having. What a, what a, what a cheating way to get out of the question, Dick. Freezing, right. really? <laughs> <laughs> like right when you were about I to get like, to it. I was like, I'm definitely not uh, still. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm gone. Um, yeah, yeah. It was, so they approached us. We were like, nah. Um, and then they were like, we'll have the meeting anyway. So uh, while we were sort of getting ready for it, we were like, well, let's have a real conversation about it. And came to the realization that the thing um, that always stuck out as lacking from the film for us was more of, of Ashley, of the Ashley character. Um, Jasmine did a wonderful job of creating a character that felt uh, like the kind of woman that we grew up around and, and loved and don't get to see that often on television. And so when we went into the meeting, we said, look, you're probably gonna say no to this, but like, we don't really, it's not about us. If we're gonna do this, it's not about us, it's about Ashley. We had a bunch of other ideas set on a block. We think it should have dance. We, should, we pitched a bunch of ludicrous ideas that we assumed they would say no to and we could go on about our lives. And then they said, yes. Uh, and so we were, we were shocked and stuck um, but also it, it had gotten exciting, you know, we were actually yeah. excited to make this thing. So we went about finding the rest of these incredible writers to help us accomplish it. Yeah, uh, the show premiered uh, last Sunday, June 13th. Uh, so I, I think now people have a sense of the tone. It's so funny. It, it is similar to the movie in that way, where it really does take on joy in these, these circumstances that I think most shows would go kind of a dark route. Uh, could you kind of talk about the decision to, to refocus the story on Ashley, to make it very female centered? And then also, how did you change the comedy for TV? 
Uh, Cause it's so funny. I just, it's hilarious. And I, I, I don't know that people, I think people think, oh, this is about prison. It's going to be so serious. Uh, and it's so just delightful and joyful to watch. I, I mean, I do think that circumstance, like the, we were trying to carry over as much of the tone of the film as possible, which luckily, you know, us and, and all of our, our writers here, we had something to point to, to go, does this feel like it's in the world of this thing that we already made? But we also had a little bit of flexibility because like one of the sort of big missing narratives in the film is like, we, we wrote a film all about me and David's characters because we were 21 and 24 when we started writing it. We didn't know shit about character or really writing too far outside yourself, right? You kind of start, you start it yourself and then gain the skills to embody other more and more characters. And so I think we knew the in going into a story about Ashley, we would also have access to a bunch of other characters. And we started to think of who the, who the immediate people would be that would be really interesting. So I think by the time we were bringing in um, these four lovely humans, like we sort of knew kind of where we wanted things to go. We had some episode ideas and we, and we knew you know, what, what characters we would start with at least. And then I think in the process of us all sitting down and, and talking it through, a lot of that got undone. A lot of that got, you know, redirected. And a lot of the humor does come from circumstances that were brainstormed in that room, you know. And so I think we spent a lot of our first week together in, in Canada. We all went up to Vancouver because Davi was shooting and we wanted to be in close proximity with him in, in the beginning of the process, at least. Um and we sat in that room and like, we kind of just talked shit for a week. It was amazing. It was like, you know, we, I think we, we first started with art that we loved and art that didn't work for us. And we had like really impassioned conversations about shit we didn't like. And um, we also just like shared a lot of music and just told a bunch of stories about our own lives. And, and, you know, the big reason that we came about this group was because really over the last, over the last year of, of my life, I had sort of gotten to know everybody here you know in a different like ha having nothing to do with the job like me and Najla had gone to get food a couple of times Alana had shown me her her um, first film we bumped into each other at a, at a mutual friend's house and me and Priscilla had been having like unofficial salons about Latin identity at a cafe somewhere and we've known Ben since he was 14 we've been watching his art forever and so I think and we were big you know we were big fans of everyone's art Najla had just written and directed her own film that was, you know, though it was shot in LA to us was a Bay movie, it was a movie about her experiences growing up in the Bay. And so I think we felt like we had this like powerhouse team of people that could really kind of get to the core of these characters that we were excited to write about, but definitely needed a lot of help to figure out. Um, and so I feel like that, that process really became a lot of just sort of collective sharing and trying to increase the proximity of our lives as quickly as possible so that we could be really honest about where the story should go. Yeah, uh, and I think we see, you know, it is focused more on Ashley, but it's also Trisha's story, it's Rainey's story. It's about this like trilogy of women. Uh, so I'd really love to hear uh, from Alana, Nigella, Priscilla, how did it feel to, to build this world of like female characters? And I, I think for me, it, it's women of color that I, I haven't seen on TV doing things that I really haven't seen them do, like have fun and just enjoy romance. Uh, so if you could speak to the themes that you really wanted to bring out in the show, uh, and also just in your previous work, uh, I'd love to hear about those things. Just sum it all up for me real quick. <laughs> uh, let's start with Priscilla. <laughs> sure. Um, I mean, I think my positionality in the room is kind of interesting. Like I'm not from the Bay. I'm like pretty much the only person in the room who doesn't have a close relationship to the Bay aside from my like close relationship to Rafa, you know? Um, I think what I did immediately relate to in all of these women, however, is that I think, you know, I'm Colombian born and raised and uh, I grew up in a really intense, I had like, a, my parents had a really intense life. And I think whenever my story, my own story gets pitched, you know, like, I don't know what my, I always love to tell the story. Like when I first got to LA, I don't know what my agents used to say to people whenever I took a meeting, but it felt like whenever I walked into a room, it was like people were, people were expecting like the embodiment of like Maria full of grace, the movie to like walk in the door, you know what I mean? And like meet me with that level of intensity. And I have always had to give people permission to laugh. 
you know, like to like look at my story and handle it and realize that it like I, I lead with comedy and and that's actually more the way that I like to package very important things. And so for me, the end to these women was always that it was like, I do understand what it's like to like grow up in immense pressure and perhaps under dire circumstances. And yet like, you know, my favorite movies growing up were Sleepless in Seattle. You know what I mean? Even though I like grew up in 1990s Columbia. And I think that contrast was like immediately like the emotional end to me for the, all of the characters that we were building. It was like, yes, these are the circumstances through which we're living in. But um, if these characters are in hand handling their life with some lightness of being, then what are we doing? You know, yeah. and I, I got really, really psyched to be able to like have a have a go at that with all of these women. Yeah, uh, Alana. Yeah, well, first I'll just say that uh, for starters, I was just super excited to be part of this because I was like obsessed with the film, loved the film, and you know, echoing what Rafa and David said about the Ashley character, I loved her, and I I just remember like the the one scene that really stood out to me with her was spoiler alert if you haven't seen the film um was the scene when sean has the gun and they're like approaching him and they're like and and ashley's just her response to that her her fierce protection of sean and that emotional response you know i'm actually uh, this is my first sort of little foray into comedy um i tend to to gravitate towards dramatic writing so um it was, but it was, it was just really exciting to me to get to expand on the Ashley character uh, to start with and her world. And for me, it's always getting to showcase women, um, how powerful we are, what, what we're capable of, what, um, you know, our, the dichotomy in who we are and the richness of who we are. And, and yeah, and a, sto a story is so nuanced, so niche set in the Bay that, you know, I'm, I'm here, I've lived here for four years now. So I, I still consider myself semi new, but uh, it's, it's such a, it's such a rich, beautiful place. And so to get to, to tap into these women and to highlight them in this space, in this place um, was just really, really exciting to me. And, and yeah, and then and then and then just expanding from Ashley into the other characters and getting to do you know the same thing with each of them in such a unique way. They're also different, and yet, and yet there's this, despite when they're at each other's throats, you know, there's this deep love and loyalty that you know is like locked in. That that you know there may be scenes where there's friction, and that definitely scenes where there's friction, and it feels like we're you know th that may be in the balance. But then there's something about like family and loyalty and bay loyalty and love that you just know that that's never gonna, that's that's never gonna go away, and and you you're you you always have that love as your starting point. But then from there you get to play in other areas, and that was really fun to get to to get to see those dualities and 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 create those dualities. Yeah, and Nigel. Yeah, so um, I'm born and raised from the Bay, from the East Bay, Oakland, Hayward, Berkeley. And I really wanted to bring that experience into the room, uh, being a Black woman, a uh, Black girl in the Bay, um, born and raised, but also um, leaving the Bay for a long time. I was away from the Bay for a long time. I went to film school. I've lived in Brooklyn. I lived in DC. I I've been in NOLA. Like I've been in different places and then come back to the Bay and feel a sort of estrangement, uh, feel a distance, feel like, where are my friends? Like I'm seeing people, they're like, where have you been? There's um, loneliness, a lot of loneliness when I go home, but there's a lot of joy. Um, there's just a lot of complexity with um, my experience growing up in the Bay, um, finding my love for art there, going to Grand Lake Theater, seeing Malcolm X when I was 10 years old, kind of really being uplifted in the Bay, but also feeling a distance from it um, sometimes when I go back. So I was really interested in exploring um, that journey um, especially in Janelle's character. I think it was really fascinating to me to see her come back from kind of this international experience 
and really be kind of grasping for relationships and for closeness with friends who have kind of grown, you know, in a different direction. And so I was really interested in that, um, you know, because I've lived that. I come from a more kind of poetic drama background. And so this was my first foray into, into a more kind of humor comedy space. And I, that was a little worrisome to me, but I found the room to be such a joy um, just to be able to be free to be, to make jokes and be funny. Um, and I remember Raphael saying like, you are like a really funny person. And so that really spark something for me to know that I could have the freedom to be fun and just, you know, explore like weird eccentric qualities of, of people and of myself. Yeah. And so I would look for that in the different characters. Um, and I found myself attracted to kind of exploring, you know, kind of like tragedy, but also comedy, but also humor and sadness and how all of that really comes through. Um, and like I said, just being from the Bay and wanting to really show Black women, um, biracial women, just women of color who are from there, because I don't really see a lot of times fully complicated uh, Black women from the Bay in in TV and film. So it's really important for me to come in there and let my, vo my voice be heard when it comes to, you know, just making sure the characters are, you know, awesome. Yeah. They yeah. were and yeah, I, I feel like you did an amazing job because Janelle is one of those characters that I immediately loved, that I was just immediately like, she's so funny in a way that you you don't really see on TV. She doesn't feel like a sidekick. Uh, and obviously we get to see her relationship develop with Earl, uh, who is played by Benjamin, who is here with us. Uh, so Benjamin, I would love to hear about how you got in the writer's room, how it felt to also balance playing this character. Uh, how, how'd you get involved? Um. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, sometimes I feel like it was just an accident or just pure good old fashioned nepotism. Um, <laughs> but, but I do think that, uh, you know, um, both Diggs and Rafa have been so good at sort of, um, just kind of keeping w one another in orbit. I mean, especially as someone who I'm not always the best in terms of being, um, communication oriented and just reaching out, et cetera, et cetera. But they do a really good job, I think, of, of sort of saying, okay, we have people in this solar system and, and, and we're all in relative distance to one another, but there's communication and there's distance that can be crossed. So I think they've done that with me for, you know, at this point, like half of my life. Um, and, and when the time came, I think they recognized that I might be, I might be prepared. I'd sort of been working on a spec script of my own, um, and long story short, uh, I ended up in Vancouver in this room, just brainstorming uh, while I was also like working on this other play um, that I was in. And um, and it was just such a refreshing experience. It was like truly what I always imagined like a think tank to be like. Like as a kid, I was just like, oh, think tanks are cool. I had no clue what they were, but I was just like, oh, think tanks are cool. Um, and it felt like that. It felt like this supercharged brain like we all just connected our brains together and we're trying to work out a really beautiful problem you know um and I, I would say I mean <laughs> I always was very nervous around Earl particularly just because I was playing him so I was just like I don't want to say I don't want to say too much but uh maybe he could do this you know um very like fine they were just like say what you think um but I guess getting getting involved was a, a lot of just showing up when invited and being comfortable leaning into the invitation I mean that was so much of it is just not doubting that I was able to be in the room this was um one of my first experiences in television and so the other thing was was leaning on the people who were in the room um and each writer in the room gave me different gifts throughout the process so that I could sort of uh, do what I needed to do, whether it was someone giving me books or someone teaching me structure or someone uh, teaching me levity or someone else sending uh, a script my way. Like th those were all the things in which they kind of propped me up to do the job. Um, 
And because of so much investment uh, in the writing space, I think it made it a lot easier to sort of transfer that over to to playing a character. So I yeah. think I answered your question. I don't know. Um, yeah, I, that was amazing. Yeah, exactly. It, I feel like there was so much trust and intimacy needed in this room to create this show, which I, I got to see a few episodes. So I know how much more experimental it gets, how you manage to combine these very traditional TV structures with just really experimental things like dance and spoken word. How how did you do that? Just how how did you work together to to bridge all of these things together? Because I'm watching it and I'm just like, this seems so difficult. Uh, when you know like certain patterns start to get built and you're like, oh my gosh, I see this now in the background of this character dancing and these movements. There's so many layers to it. How did you work together to craft that? Feel free, whoever wants to jump in and start with the question. <laughs> y'all, me and Diggs been talking so much. We're like, we're not trying to chime oh. in, man. <laughs> I think I can, I, I can start us off with this, obviously. Um, I think to Benjamin's point and and the mention of Rafa saying that they've been talking so much, they've been, they've been talking so much about the show forever and what it would be like. And I think what was clear in the room was that like we, as writers, we're all bringing in different layers. You know what I mean? And there was like, there was like, la there was so many layers to making the show and it, it was like building a house. It was like, all right, we're gonna like really set the structure out, which like, that's, that was like my skill set. That's all I had to bring to the room. I was like, I know structure, that's what I can bring here. I'm not from the Bay. I don't know this lingo, but I got structure. You know what I mean? Um, I got the books. Um, and then we would make a pass at structure and then we would make another pass, right? And it was like, I think there was immense trust in the vision, I think that Rafa and David were holding much like any project, right? It felt like I come from the theater and it felt like I know that they have this entire play in their mind and eventually we're gonna get it to tech week and it's all gonna make sense. But for now, we like need to do the blocking, you know? And then like, like we all gotta learn our lines, we gotta do the blocking. Right now we're like rehearsing in weird rehearsal spaces. And then eventually we'll get in the theater and the set will make it all make sense. And eventually we'll all come together, but it was layers, you know? It was like structure. Now we're gonna have like, the this is where all the dancing is going to come in this is where we see all of the sort of like movement come in and then we got to do like a verse pass you know it was like it was building the world's greatest sandwich i would add to that this was a new process for me i had been in another writer's room but coming into that, that room that showrunner had like a, a bible that was kind of set out and we were kind of just adding to that vision that was already set out. But with this room, we were actually very integral. We were a very big in, uh, integral part in building the Bible. So building a world, which is what I love is world building. So getting to really, like Priscilla was talking about, she came in with a really tight sense of that structure. Um, a lot of people also kind of contributed to that, but also just the nuances and the meat of the characters' lives and who they were. Um, you know, there were times when we may not have, you know, saw eye to eye about certain things, but we really delved in and like talked about it and explored our different perspectives on, you know, who these people were. Um, based in our own lived experience, we talked a lot. I mean, it's a writer's room. You talk a lot about yourself and about just who you are and your family and, and the world you come from. And I think that's how you get to the core of of humanity and in, in character building. So that was something I was really interested in. And I love the opportunity to come in and help build the world as opposed to coming in and already having a world built for me. And, you know, I love both experience definitely, but I found this to be really interesting and in that there, there was less rules and more just uh, opportunity to, to dive in and, and bring your voice. Yeah. So just to piggyback on that, like I do think Look, the, the reality is that me and David d d don't know shit, or now we do a little bit, but we didn't know shit about, you know, running a writer's room, really. Um, and we, you know, we called other people we knew who had been in rooms and had run rooms before. And really the consensus we got back is do it however you want. You know, that there's, there's, more, there's more constraints on just the budget as opposed to the structure. So I think for us, it felt like, like, I, like the, the room that Naj was talking about that she came from, like we heard that recommendation too. It was like, well, figure the whole thing out and then you bring writers in to sort of populate the buckets that you've already built. But that felt like really sort of arrogant of us to try to do it. Like, well, but the buckets matter. Like we, we don't even know all the buckets. 
Um, and so I think we had sort of these loose ideas, you know, we, we had obviously sold the show talking about what the first season would be all, oh, you know, Janelle may do this and Trish might do this. And, you know, we came to the room sort of just with those like point B's that also those were moving targets. It was like, we just think that's an interesting place to get to, but let's talk about it, you know? And I think that, I think the most valuable, while everyone here, we all wrote episodes and, and also like helped write on each other's episodes and contributed a whole bunch, but the, the true, like the value point of this that we discovered in this moment was that getting that early time with a group of people to just talk, like, no, all right, you're going to write this. We didn't even know who was going to do what until the very, very end. It was just like, this story seems really, really fascinating. And what about that? You know, getting to just kind of talk through, you know, it felt like this puppeteer, you know, workshop with a bunch of people being like, I don't, you know, I don't think she would do that because she was, she went from here and then to here. And when, when that happened in my life, that, that wasn't my reaction. My reaction was actually this. We'd all go, oh, that's interesting. And somebody else would pop in and go, well, you know, I had a similar thing kind of happen with this. And I feel like, you know, we started to sort of build these, not just the characters themselves, but also really try to find the most authentic way for them to engage with each other at where they are in their lives. So it's also a lot of like, what was this person doing right before this scene? What was, you know you know, what headspace are they in if they've just like, if Janelle's just come back from Bali and spent five years, like what happened, you know? And like, wow, we don't describe, we, we don't talk about it in the first episode of the show. We all know from jump what Janelle was doing, you know, and when we're going to reveal that. And we know a bit about Earl's, we don't reveal sort of how Earl grew up until episode six, but we talked about it as like, well, that needs to inform Earl every scene, you know, and the same with Trish and, where is she at with her conversation about sex work? How much does she actually know about it? And I think that became a very, I would consider that the most valuable step that no one told me we would need is to sit in a room and not have any expectations and just be like, all right, let's talk about all the Trishes in our lives. Who's like, who's got a close proximity to a Trish in some way. All right, let's talk about your friend that did this. And my, you know, my play sister I grew up with who did this and, you know, and that really became just brilliantly eye-opening, especially, I think, especially for me and Diggs. I'd call Diggs because he'd be shooting that day. I'd call him the night and be like, yo, so Nigel said this shit today. And then Priscilla said, that, you know, and these are, these are the conversations we were happening, having and we'd get to sort of like download these, this, these days of like brilliant insight into, um, into characters before we put anything down on paper. It, also, I was just going to jump on that or add to your, your initial question, Ashley, about the, um, the layers of movement and verse and story into story. Uh, I agree. It does seem very ambitious. And, you know, because when you, you just start at baseline with story, getting characters in a scene to have conflict and, uh, you know, goals and objectives, et cetera, and like have an emotional truth come across that feels genuine and authentic in itself is difficult. Like when you watch good television, you know, as an audience member, a lot of people that are not in this industry don't realize how hard it is to get there. Like how many pieces have to align and fall into place just for that to happen. And so then to add in movement and verse into this world, you know, for me, I don't come from a background of, of movement, movement or verse. So that was, you know, it, or comedy. So <laughs> there was a lot of these challenges that were, that were fun and interesting to face and I would say for me, finding those layers was like, um, you know, when you, when you create story, you create characters, there's so much, you know, in reflecting life, mirroring life, there's so much that happens in life that is not said, that is, you know, we feel internally that we may communicate in an expression or a certain behavior fidgeting or whatever the case may be. And so with visual storytelling, I think it, I think the movement and the verse is a, is a fresh, a fresh, interesting way to see that inner life and to see, to see, you know, what's not necessarily just said. It's, you know, it's a way to, to tap into the inner emotions of these characters. And, and that was really exciting to get to be part of that, to create, create that. So like for me, and sort of kind of going through and trying to craft like moments for those spots, it was like, okay, well, here's a moment where maybe otherwise like how would we communicate this most powerfully and it's like oh this is a spot where there's this inner turmoil in Ashley and she's 
you know, she, she could like explode. And there are other ways you could potentially show that, you know, showcase that, but to, to then go there to the, the ver a verse moment or a movement moment and really show that in such a beautiful, intense, powerful, hard hitting way um, for me was where those layers could come in. Yeah, I, I just think you did an incredible job. Everyone's gonna get to see as they watch the season. I mean, ambitious is a way to put it. I feel like I would have been so scared. Like David said, they just went into this meeting and pitched things they thought like would never happen. And you all made it happen. You really brought it to life. Uh, so we have reserved the last 10 minutes for a Q&A. We have some wonderful questions that have come in from the audience. Uh, so let's dive into those. Uh, Chris asks, how different was it to write for established characters rather than building from scratch in the room? Uh, well, I guess, I mean, really in this story, right, the only established characters are Miles and uh, Ashley, um, really. And everyone else is new, except like occasionally, you know, what was, what was fun was getting to like pepper in some of the like side, you know, bringing Cuddy back from the film was like, you know, we ha you have um, these moments where we could bring people back that we, characters back that we fell in love with. But um, yeah, I think like Raphael was saying, the the value of that time of that, of like the the creating, creating those characters and understanding them, uh, maybe this is because I'm an actor first, right? Or because I come from, acting and most of the ways I've interacted with scripts before I started writing them was as an actor, but like a script is a bunch of suggestions and the budget is going to dictate half of those things changing, right? So it doesn't really, it, it, it's, you have to do so much work to make something that works because it has to work well enough for you to be able to throw everything out and start over again with only a day left to do it and still know that the foundation is strong enough to do it, right? So building those characters from scratch was really about and the, and the work that, that all of these folks did was really about that part, I think, like getting, making sure that we knew this world so well that like, even when, you know, somebody came in and was like, hey, those four locations, you can't afford to shoot it. Uh, well, that sounds like a full episode rewrite, but that's okay. Like, you know, like we know, we know what had to happen to these people in this episode. So that's really just circumstances. Um, that, that is the that is the architecture build right like yes ashley existed in the movie but like not like this yeah you know we everyone in this room designed ashley 1000 percent. we oh yeah I, 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 I would love to say that like we had sort of established ashley in the movie but like she's in service of a different story you know and so like things had to be decided but but also a lot of that was decided in jasmine's head in order to to deliver the character but I think we got to sit there and like go okay well what do people actually know about Ashley very little you know and so I do think like the first thing we got to do is decide who the hell Ashley was um and that those architect those architect builds of each character is allowed like those are the bones of the whole show is, is those intense conversations about who these people are what they do is so like I mean like once a show's got its legs like you just write episodes for dates like that you know, that, that that's why you, so many shows get into later seasons and there's just all writers are just coming in. They're like, I got one. I got an episode. I, you know, because the, all the hard work's already been done. Like this group of people designed who these people are, you know, so that so that there can be, you know, an infinite number of episodes about them because you put them in a situation and you remember who who we built them to be and how they make their decisions. Yeah. And and then, you know what they're going to do. You know, now, now because of everybody here, we can put we can start writing a scene and go. Janelle wouldn't say that. Like, what a crazy thing to say. She's like a real person. Yeah. You know, like we can say, nah, Earl wouldn't do that. Earl would do this. Like, we know this motherfucker, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because we spent all this time deciding who these people are. Yeah. Uh, I, I, we have about 10 minutes and I want to get to everyone's questions. So I'm going to go to the next one. Uh, Laurel asks, very curious about Raphael's experience as showrunner uh, compared to writing and performing these stories. And if that was a professional goal uh, before you got an offer to make this for TV. Oh, no, it wasn't a professional goal, but I do think like, <laughs> I love I love being able to help facilitate sort of like getting to the end goal. Like that is a, a part of the process that I love. 
I do think also like I was sort of told that like I, I heard all these horror stories about showrunners that are just like all top down power dynamics and like you know come in and just like yay and nay shit based on how they see sort of their vision and like I think we sort of me and David come a little bit more from the theater world where like your job is facilitation and really you know mind you like we can't reinvent the wheel in season one because nobody knows us they're not gonna let us do it exactly how we want to do it but what we were trying to do and I, I think we've had some success at this was just create and this is also a big reason that we we invited the people that we invited into the process was entirely that like I knew that like a weekend, Nigel is not going to not say how she feels. You know, they're like when Alana doesn't, when some shit doesn't compute for Alana, it doesn't compute. <laughs> like Alana will just go, that doesn't make sense to me. And just let it hang in the air and be like, okay. Bump <laughs> for kind of me. This, this is going to bump for me. That's my favorite. Yeah, this is going to bump for me. And we like, and, and I think it was a lot of it was about like how quickly can we get a room full of people to be hella honest with each other about, some shit, you know, and also learn everybody's like, because also, you know, everyone's coming with their own, you know, uh, their own sort of life concerns about their career in this room. And I, like, you can't discount that. So also like, it would be body language. You just see somebody be like, no, you, that you kind of do that when you don't fuck with an idea. Let's talk about it, yeah. you know, and, and try to get to a place where it's impossible to get to a fully, you know, a fully transparent place, but try to get to as honest of a one as possible. So that, you know, two dudes who are trying to pivot a show that was our movie that was about dudes to a story about women aren't hindering the writing process of those characters based on the people we actually asked to come in and shape who they are. You know, and I think that was the big, you know, task that like you're always having degrees of like failure and success at. But like that, that was the sort of daunting goal. And so like, I think for me, when they were like, who do you want to bring in? It was like, well, I need to ask. I need to get four people in this room that I actually think will get fed up enough with me if I'm on my bullshit to just be like, that doesn't work. <laughs> like that, that doesn't compute. And there's nothing more, there's nothing more profoundly like, like soberingly clear than like three women in a room being like, nah, <laughs> like, like, like just, just like, nah, like, you know, <laughs> like, cool. All right. We're not going to do that. Yes. That's <laughs> not going to work. <laughs> You know? uh, I really want to get to this question. It's it's a really good good one. Uh, Michael asks for each writer, which character you enjoy? Do you enjoy writing for the most, and which is the most challenging? Uh, let's just start with Benjamin. Oh man. Um, no okay. <laughs> yeah, I would say I enjoy writing. Honestly, I enjoy writing for anybody who's not Earl, and Earl is the most challenging because I know I have to be, I have to play Earl. And so there's a there's a level of like, just to be frank, uh, distrust that I have to have, I think, for of myself as Benjamin, that I'm going to like write Earl how Earl should be written and to keep that degree of separation because it's too easy to be like, yeah, but I want I want him to be OK. You know, or like I want I want him to like I don't want uh, bad things to happen or I don't want, you know, um, and so that makes it. I think a little bit more difficult. And sometimes I would have to be like, damn, I really just got to accept like he, he gonna make a decision. I would never want him to make, you know? And, and I think everyone else was so helpful in sort of like pushing him over the cliff in that way. Um, and then uh, I think I enjoy writing for everyone else so much because I get to put my funny hat on and I, I get to like be super silly. So um I think one of my strengths is coming up with jokes and coming up with funny scenarios. And I really like to put like unfunny people or serious people in, in very silly situations. Um, and so it's fun to have Ashley having to react to something bizarre when she walks in the house, or it's really fun to me to have, um, to have Janelle have to interface with like um, different men she might be dating or like all that shit is really hilarious to me. Um, and that, that was kind of my, my, favorite parts and, and most difficult parts. Yeah, uh, Priscilla? Um, I think Ashley was always uh, the clearest for me. And also to answer a previous question, it was really, while we had to build Ashley, it was, it was a new experience for me to write for an actor. Like we knew it was going to Jasmine. We knew Jasmine was our, our voice. And I, I told Jasmine this, like I, I felt 
that for months I had, I was spending every day with Jasmine. You know what I mean? Like I was like, I was like, she was constantly, constantly in my head and that was so helpful. And Ashley herself was so clear to me. I just like, I understood that person. Even if I like, didn't always understand her parlance, I understood her. Um, and that was helpful. I think for whatever reason, and I don't, for whatever, Miles is always the toughest. Like I, I couldn't, I couldn't crack Miles. And I don't know if it was like, cause I knew Rafa was going to crack it for me regardless. Like there was just something about like latching onto that character that I, I think Miles disarmed me too. And I was like, I don't know how to handle you brother. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, Nigel? Yeah, um, I just want to speak to kind of like the writing process that we we wrote so many drafts, right? And so I feel like I spent a lot of quality time with a lot of different characters in different drafts. It made me feel very close to them. So I felt very close to Janelle, definitely, and also exploring her backstory and like what happened with her when she was away. I felt very close to Trish. And I felt very close to um, to Earl and knowing that Benny was playing Earl, it always gave me a closeness to that character and I always felt just kind of this empathy for him. Um, so those characters were like ones that I really found myself just drawn to. With Ashley, I feel like I, I was drawn to, but also had to do the work to really understand her and really kind of like immerse myself in her world. And so I became closer to her as we went on. I think Rainy is a character that I, you know, still would be like, okay, like I would love to continue with that immersion to, to really explore her more. Yeah. And Alana? I'll just start by saying I love all of these characters and kind of echoing what Nigel was just saying, like getting to, to build them all out. They, it, I almost feel like I'm like a ghost in the house. Like I'm, I'm a family member with them and um, just got to get to know all of them and like love them all so much, which is really cool. I would say I connect the most with Ashley. I, I feel like I kind of understand her and I, I just like resonate with her and just feel the closest to her. Like I just understand her journey. Um, and Janelle was really fun to write. She was just for whatever reason, like I just enjoyed, it was like a, it was just fun to get to dig into her and, and write the scenes with her. And I'd say the most challenging was probably Trish, but also fun because I think she, you know, she, they all have conflict, but she, she brings another, you know, a level of conflict that's also really fun. Uh, to get to to dig into the drama of those moments and then also like balance it out with with comedic beats but yeah I'd say she was probably the challenge for me yeah uh, and we only have a minute left so I'm, I'm so sorry David Rafia I, I, I'm cutting you off here you don't get to answer this question sorry uh, this is all about your writers today <laughs> Uh, I, I just, I do want to end on this one. I, I love this question. Just what do you hope people take from the show? Uh, and what do you want to say as people, you know, watch the rest of the season, at, which is every Sunday on Stars? Um, I'll just go quick because my answer is canned as canned can be. <laughs> uh, but it is true. It is very, very genuine. And I just, I really hope that people get a deep desire to to watch more of these characters. I hope that they kind of find this insatiable need to see them continue through this bizarre world that we built. Um, and that, that will, that'll sort of translate um, to the reception of the show. Yeah. Great. I would say, I hope that people fall in love with these, this world and these characters like I have, and I think like we all have, and that, they can see themselves, you know, however, however specific the story might seem to be at times that they can see themselves reflected and potentially, you know, we all have dysfunction, the dysfunction of our own families, the, the pains, the hopes, the joys, all of that stuff that that really resonates with audiences and that they can really tap into that. I would say just, you know, that life is complicated and there's so much beauty in the complications of life. And I think that's what this show really um, explores. And there's so much humor and fun too. So yes. just keep that in mind. Absolutely. It is such a funny, joyful series. I, I absolutely love it. Please watch. Uh, it is Sunday, like I said, on Stars, 9 o'clock PM uh, Eastern time. Uh, and I, I hope everybody tunes in. Um, I feel like I think we might have a little extra time, uh, but 
I feel like there's so much to talk about with this show. If I ask another question, we'll be talking for like another 10 minutes uh, because I love talking about the show so much. <laughs> <laughs> Priscilla, do you have an answer for that last question? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think what I hope the most is that, um, I think at a macro level, just for, for entertainment in general, I really hope that um, people begin to see the value in making like hyper-specific shows and like the beauty in that, you know, like this show, I think Rafa and David both have said, you know, this isn't like, we're not trying to represent the whole thing. We're, we're trying to tell this like very specific story. And there's a, so much beauty in that. And that like the specific is what's universal. And the more that we are allowed to make shows like that, I think the more populated with nuance and creativity and breath and width like television will be. And I get so excited when I think about the possibilities of that, like just for us all on this call, you know, for the rest of our creative careers. Um, and I think I'm excited for blind spotting to stand, you know, sort of like amongst that and as like a beacon of what TV can really be. Yeah, that's what I got from it. that. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like it, it achieves that. I can't wait for everyone to watch it, talk about it. Uh, I want to thank you all for joining me today, this wonderful room of writers. Uh, also, everyone out there watching, thank you for joining us at the ATX TV Festival for this wonderful panel and Q&A. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. you. Peace out. Peace out.